Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the first game in a best of three between The Beck, also known as Alex of Newski, and Thrace TW. This is still round one of the great Paradox Tawny. And in this one, we're going to be playing on show, which is another unique map to add to the tournament. The Beck in this one will be using the 3rd Armoured and Thrace DW will be making use of the 21st Panzer. So let's have a look at this map in general. Both players using Armoured Divisions, which is interesting. Obviously the 21st Panzer, maybe not the strongest of Armoured Divisions are based around armour, but definitely has a lot of like support units that work very well, like the uh, Wielfachwerfer here that is actually being deployed at the start for Thrace TW. He's also going to be following that up with a couple of Panzergrens in the U304s and the Kubel. It's also an AT gun coming down to the bottom side and a SBW222. These are what the 21st Panzer are really, really good for. They have the SBW-222s with two star veterancy that drop off the Aufklader and they can make a lot of ground early on. There's also these S-307 packs which are the pack 40s mounted on the half track and they're also very very useful, very mobile AT gun there. Over on the other side we do see the third armoured and that means that we will probably see quite a lot of engagements across the open here. Starting with an M5A1 command supporting an M4A1 in the center, also the recon there of course. And then similar to the units of Panzergrenz and command heading to the town for the Beck, or for the Thrace sorry, we have the Beck here with the half tracks and a command. Again, two infantry, one command. So it's going to be a very even fight in the town, in the open, we might see the AT take out these tanks but honestly this M4A1 has a pretty decent chance to kill off the pack 38 before it does too much damage however what will likely happen as soon as these tanks are spotted in the center we will see this S307 pack move to the center and uh, try and take out those tanks it's very open here as you can see there's not many um, sight lines that are cut off like especially around this area in the center and that will make it very contested but yeah you can use these jeeps to sort of push forwards the front line so I'm kind of expecting you know the Beck here to maybe drop off his uh, recon um, and then maybe like try and hide the jeep like here for example and then that means that like anything from the red side won't be able to attack it yet he will still provide presence there with the jeep and that's likely something we're going to be seeing um, from both sides, really, although the 222 might just run up and try and kill it, which might give Thrace a pretty big advantage at the start of the game with his 21st Panzer Division. We should probably be underway shortly, as it appears that everybody has used their points up. An M16 MGMC coming out of the start. Interesting choice. I don't think the 21st Panzer have any serious firepower in the sky early on um, and there isn't really many HS129s to worry about I don't think so a very interesting decision to bring in an MGMC maybe just some mobile fire support um, getting those machine guns on the ground but here we are uh, underway five minute deployment relatively long but both players appearing to be confident with their start let's see who can get the advantage early on I think that's one of the most satisfying things, is just watching the front line bend as the game starts. But yeah, like I said before, this Jeep 30 cal has a very easy chance to be taken out by the 222, which would give Thrace the advantage on the bot side. This F307 pack, as soon as it spots all of this, will travel that direction. 1200 meter range can take full advantage of that versus the 1000 meter range of the M4A1 and the M5A1. And then in the town, we're actually going to be seeing a Panzer 4C join the infantry and command infantry there. Also, the Wielfachwerfer will very nicely pin down enemy infantry. So this recon needs to stay alive. That hopefully won't get popped by the enemy tanks here. And as soon as those are spotted, I want to see 3CW start to move over this pack. 
He's got to get that over there as soon as possible. There is an M4A1 there. Another tank that he doesn't know what it is. There we go. Thrace is heading in that direction. SPW222 pushing forwards down here. Alfkleda trying to get the recon. But so far, plus one for the Beck, as this recon is not providing presence on the front line. Yet all of these units are. So the speed trip going to go down. That's not actually very good at all. Because that's going to lose line of sight for the S307 pack. And that kind of sucks. Because now he doesn't have any target for it. Jeep 30 cal is going to be revealing itself. If the 222 can take that out, then that will open up a big front on the bottom side. 222 is in line of sight. Should kill it off very shortly. Boom. That should sort of swing back in Thrace's direction. There is a unit on the way, an infantry squad on the way, to sort of fend that off. But definitely evens things out a bit more. Panzer IV is engaging the M5A1. And there's also the Pack 38 with line of sight onto the Jeep there. Also, the Pack from the other side gets a shot off, and a lot of these units are surrounded. That's not good for the Beck. The Beck can start firing at this M4A1 with the Panzer IV as well as the S307 Pack. And it looks like this Pack might just pick off that M4A1. The MGMC goes down. Can that M4A1 get out of there? I feel as though when it gets fall, uh, fallen back, it would be slow enough to be killed anyway. But the third shot hits the mark, and the M4A1 goes down. And with that push cut off, plus one now goes in favour of Thrace. Infantry engagement starting to occur in the town. Vielfach Werfer will be opening up shortly. Panzer Grenadiers absolutely ripped to shreds those armoured rifles as they were trying to cross from building to building there. Okay, Vilfak Verfa maybe not firing today. Interesting that it hasn't been used yet. I kind of expected it to be used almost at the start of the game, as uh, soon as all of these engagements occurred. So U304 trying to take on the half track there. Wouldn't mind seeing these Panzergrens moved a little bit closer here to the M3 half track. They can keep house dodging. But here comes Vilfak Verfa now. Lovely stuff, going to help force the half-tracks to fall back there, although one of the U-304s goes down to the two-star half-track with the 50 cal. SBW-222 pushing very hard at the moment. Got to be careful though, if Thrace loses this 222 to an M5A1 here, then that again is just going to swing back in the other direction. And this is the thing with like 1v1, especially when you're playing around armoured divisions. If you lose units, it's actually devastating for holding the front line, that is. So M5A1, is it going to succeed? Yes, it is. And again, yeah, that's just going to swing back in the opposite direction. Thankfully, there is Thrace's pack here, ready and waiting to receive the M5A1. But plus one now for the Beck. So this Panzer 4C is moving over to the town, I'm assuming, so that... He can kill off the APCs, but he's got to be careful. This M1 gun will take the shot there. And if it misses, I'm hoping that Thrace reacts to that accordingly and gets his Panzer IV back into cover. So let's see how Thrace reacts to this. Now the Panzer IV C does have 9 HE, so it could possibly kill the M1 gun. But with the second shot landing on target, that's not going to be the case. And the Panzer IV C goes down. So 222 is now arriving towards the town. Thrace, again, needs to be careful. I mean, he, there's no reason why that should be in range of the M1 gun right now. Especially after his Panzer IV just died there. This is a big mistake. Because if he had the 222 moving into the town right now, he would be able to kill off these half-tracks, use his Panzergrens to win against the armoured rifles, and it would all be okay. Thankfully, just getting out of range in time. So... Thrace's 222 will survive and be able to help take down the half tracks in the town, which will be really good. In fact, Verfit is moving over here. Hopefully, going to get a round into the M1 gun, I would assume. 
The pack is waiting on this side to get a shot into the M5A1, but currently the M5A1 covered by this tree line. If this pack moved down just a little bit, he would he would he would have line of sight. Can he even see it though? Let's have a look. Yes, he can. He does have the alpha cloud back here. So there's no reason why this pack shouldn't be trying to harass the M5A1. Maybe the Beck would just sort of continue to move around this tree line. But still. That pack should be trying to go for the kill there. So the 222 has arrived. That doesn't want to die to the armored rifles. And it will. That was a bit careless there, I feel. But surely the Panzergrens are more than enough to deal with the armored rifles and armored leader and pin those down. And then once they are. Then you move up the 222 to take care of the half tracks that would be pinning your infantry down. Possibly. I mean, I'm not sure if it will quite work out like that. But either way, pack 43 on the way. Quite an interesting investment considering there's not many heavy tanks on the top side that he can't deal with just yet. Maybe he's uh, expecting this M4A1 to come down the road. Who knows? Another uh, recon squad arriving here. Another interesting choice, considering he does have an Alphcladder sitting behind enemy lines. Why would you need a speed troop in this situation? I don't know. But the pack is making the move, trying to get line of sight. Got to be careful that he doesn't put himself in range of the M5A1. Because that M5A1 does have reasonable accuracy with the one-star veterancy. And the 5 accuracy base stat anyway. Armored rifle is going to be dying on the top side. Vilfa Furfa comes in for another volley. 2 2 2 going to be opening up onto the armored leader. That's good. And it looks like the pack there succeeded in taking out the M5A1, which is going to allow the speed through to stay alive. Now, with that M5A1 gone, maybe it would be time to use the 2 2 2 here on the bot side again. Because without the threat of that M5A1, there's nothing really to stop him continuing forwards there. Bufak Verfa really doing the job in the town though. And now we see the Pack 38 trying to have a go at the M4A1. But like I was saying before, M4A1s are actually pretty decent against Pack 38's early game. Because they have 9 front armor, which is a pretty good chance of bouncing the Pack 38's. Also the Pack 38's, especially on the 21st Panzer, don't have any veterancy early on. So pack 43 opening up onto the Jeep 30 cal. Also having a go at the M1 gun. Plenty of recon in position from both sides though. Both sides focusing on that quite dramatically. Now Clara going to be re revealing the recon there. Going to be a pack 43 shot and the SBW 222 and that's going to go down I would assume. E38 Lightning coming on. Six rockets, 10 HE. Can it pin down or kill the pack? Not today. Definitely going to be forcing it to fall back though. AT gun going to be invested upon by the Beck. And the thing is we show is this town on the top side is pretty important, obviously. But on this bot side, as you can see, because there's not too much presence here, like half tracks and Jeep 30 cows are able to turn the game around. Especially when you're not entirely sure what's here, even though they have recon, it's very hard to distinguish whether or not like, like there's AT guns in certain tree lines. But sometimes you just gotta go for it, and Thrace here is making the right decision to push forwards the 222. He's taken out the M1 gun here. So that gives him a reasonably nice idea that there's not another one ahead of him. And if he can take out that jeep, that will open up a nice salient in the mid. There we go, it's dead. Things going to swing in Thrace's favour on that side. So a pretty slow game really. Just sort of tactical moves back and forth. Giving each team the lead, one after the other. Currently a major victory for the Axis in 29 minutes as they are starting to pick up points. Pack does manage to get a shot onto the M1 gun delivery and that's going to drop just out of range 
of the S307 pack. But if the Beck can get this AT gun into cover without being in line of sight of the pack, then he will be able to get it into the 1000 meter range he needs in order to take it out, which could be devastating on this bottom side. On the top side, thing, things have quietened down again. The infantry engagement has finished. Second Wielfachwerfer has arrived. I feel like any push into this town now from the Beck past these buildings won't go very well. However, he might be able to take out this 222. He might also be able to take out the Panzer IV if he's lucky. A 222 starting to fall back. And we also see pips in the sky. The Focke-Wulf 190 Ace. Two star veterancy. Going to be strafing the M1 gun on the ground there. Lovely stuff. Speed Troop going to be spotting that out. And it looks like this pack might try and find line of sight. I'm not quite sure why he's got a fast move command forwards. So that's interesting. I guess he's assuming that his Focke Wolf 190 will take out the AT gun, which it will. Can he see this M4A375 on the way? Not yet. But as soon as it passes Alf Clara, I feel like he should be much more defensive with his S307 pack. In the town, M4A1 was able to kill the Panzer IV. And we do see a Brumbar on the way, which is very nice indeed. Recon squad going to be taken out there as well. Wolf 190 really picking up some nice kills there. Looking for the 1,200 meter range now onto the M4A375 on the bot side. Rumbar is currently being hit by the M4A1. Got to be careful not to show side armor, otherwise that will die. One thing that is needed on this top side is an AT gun. But it looks like a Panzer 4G going to be the unit of choice instead. Which definitely has the veterancy and accuracy to take on a M4A1. So the S307 pack has shot onto the M4A3, got the crew knockout there, which is actually really, really good. However, does the Alfkladder have line of sight? It does. So it's going to make a charge. We're going to see the M4A3 try to get into range of the S307 pack. Or maybe he was just fast moving it forwards to break the line of sight. Either way, it's worked, allows his M4A375 to recover, and then when the next engagement occurs, he's got to hope that his M4A3 is accurate. Not today. Maybe the second shot will do the job. Best thing to do here though would just be allow the M4A3 to get into cover behind this tree, and, and then just recover, like the morale fully. You could also get the M4A376 mail to have a go, which is likely what's going to happen here, and that will probably land the shot. Six accuracy with a one-star veterancy, S307 pack goes down. Okay, Panzer IV arriving in the town. That's going to be looking for the engagement with the M4A1. SBW222 is pushing around on the top side, but got to be careful it doesn't reveal itself to the M4A1 again. Definitely playing with fire there. I would probably suggest bringing this SBW222 back to the supply so that he has 20 mil ammunition. Then he can take on the half tracks so that he can see ahead of him. But Boyter Sherman actually coming up. That's looking for the engagement. On the bot side, M4A3 will find shots towards the U304. So that Panzergren needs to be unloaded. It's actually some pioneers now moving into phase B. Panzer 4G is arriving. Not the most ideal unit, however, to deal with an M4A3 because that M4A3 does have the 1,200 meter range. The Panzer 4 does not. M4A3 does go down there. Was that a shot from the boy to Sherman? I feel like it was. And this is going to leave the Beck very exposed. Panzergrens are charging his position. The engineers are pinned down. There's no command nearby. They're going to surrender probably before they throw a grenade, which allows the Panzergrens to you know, take that position. 222 doesn't have any ammunition to kill off these half-tracks. 
So that's a problem. Recon squad there will be revealed as the Panzergrenz move in next door. But the Beck is now focusing on the bottom side of the map, which is definitely something he should be choosing to do at this point. M4A3 gets the engine destroyed onto the Panzer 4G as it reinforces, and that is a very dead Panzer 4. Also going to be seeing the 222 go down there, and this is the Beck's chance at breaking back of the plus one. However, the same thing's going to happen on the top side. Thrace is moving through with the Panzer 4G. Once he kills these half tracks, move on to, moves on to this infantry. Things aren't going to end too well. Rumbar getting the 25 HG power shot there onto the M3 half track. Pioneers go down to a surrender, and these units are piling on through. This Pack 43 ideally should be attack moving to the bot side, I feel. If he can take the kill onto the recon, though, that will definitely help out as well. If you blind your enemy, you're generally in a good spot. P38 Lightning coming in. Going to be going for the rocket strike onto the Grenadiers there. Takes them down to one health. Almost gets the kill. That's a bit unlucky. Armoured rifles, however, being ran off the field by the Brumbar Panzer 4G and the U304. And they are dead upon retreat. But the push still coming through here. The Beck going to be pushing far forwards with the M3 Scout. This recon needs to be unloaded. And needs to get out of line of sight, which is exactly what's going to happen. Now the M3 Scout going to bump into the Befell Panzer IV. Ideally you want to kind of save the speed troop if you can. Although those two units now have a fire at position order isn't quite working out. Panzer 4G is having a go at the M4A375 and is going to get the kill. That is massive. That definitely relieves a lot of pressure on the top side. Allows Thrace to continue the plus one. He has pretty much two thirds of the map under his control right now. And the scout is going to go down there as well. And just the presence of this Befell Panzer 4 is going to stop the M4A375 and the M3A1 from moving forwards. But can the Pack 43 get the shot? That was actually pretty damn close. It looks like it one shot forced back the M20 command. Maybe another Pack 43 needs to come in on this bot side, and that might allow Thrace to clean up this insurgency. Also, moving into phase C, we might just see a King Tiger come out, because that would help out as well. Now, Bomber coming in, Bokkawolf 190G1. If he can force the M4A3 to flinch and fall back, then that's going to allow his Panzer 4H to get on target and hopefully get the kill. Oh, the M4A3 missed the shot. The Befell Panzer did not. Can he get the second shot off? He really needs to focus his M4A3 and currently he's firing at the M3A1 half track. HE rounds now going for the scouts as well. Needs to make sure that he's microing that properly. Currently he is not, and the M4A3 is arriving. He's going to get the kill onto that. Weapon damage, however, for his Panzer IV. He has time to retreat that, and he should be, but he's not. And that's going to allow the M4A3 to get the second shot uh, to kill the Panzer IV there. So that is bad news, because it, that basically gives the Beck the land spawn here. Now up on this top side, actually an engine destroy for the Jumbo. Panzer 4G has endless shots against that Jumbo there. Now, you want to see Thrace move forwards his uh, Panzer 4G really to get the shot off, but doesn't need to since the Panzer Grenadiers get the Panzer Faust into that armor and goodbye to the Jumbo. So this is interesting because, yeah, the spawn's captured now down on the bot side here by the Beck. I feel like the loss of the Panzer IV was almost unnecessary. Yes, the M4A 376mm might have like charged it around the corner because obviously weapon damage means it has no ammo. But then you could just bring in like a reinforcing unit and just ambush the M4A 3. So yeah, I'm, I'm a bit worried that Thrace wasn't really paying attention there. Was mo most likely occupied with the Jumbo coming in on the top side, which is fair enough, I guess. P38 Lightning. Going to be coming in to rocket the P30 or the Pack 38. That's thanks to the recon there spotting that out. But P38 
P38 Lightnings don't really do too much to those pack 38s. And uh, Focke Wolf 190 coming in again, just to support. Because as you can see, like pretty much, this is like two thirds of the map, more or less, in favor of Thrace. And that's a plus two currently. Victory in 13 minutes and 50 seconds. Thrace really, really pushing his advantage on this side. And it seems as though all, all he's doing is just not coming to fruition. The Panzer IV here, like, that M4A3 should probably win against Panzer IV-G. But for some reason, that Panzer IV-G was allowed to engage that at 1,000 meter range. Like, that M4A3 should be back here. You know, 1,200 meter range is where you want to go from. And even if um, you can't, you know, engage at that range, just make sure that you ambush it at close range. Because then your M4A3 will always hit sooner. So, like, the M4A3 has a much faster aim time than the Panzer IV. And you want to take advantage of that. Now this M4A3 firing at the Brumbar. Brace is going to have to look at trying to get closer. But that's not going to happen. That's the way you want to do it. Fire at them when they can't fire back. Recon squad going to go down there. Thanks to the Afkladder spotting those out. Phoenix Tiger is heading down to the bottom side. I love the paint job on this King Tiger. It looks goddamn awesome. And the M4A3 going to retreat there. Now this could be kind of hard to push back because this Koenig Tiger, although it's a lot stronger than the M4A3, if the M4A3 gets a really nice sort of ambush at close range onto the King Tiger, it does have a chance of penetration. The only thing that I'm likely to see here is a Focke Wolf 190 with the bomb come in and bomb the M4A3 and then the King Tiger is just going to pop it. But instead of that, the Beck's just going to run away, which I feel like is, is a bad decision. Like you have this entire box here. There's like a box of trees, right? That you can hide in and you're going to have to force the King Tiger to get close in order to dislodge this territory that's being gained on this bottom side. And then while the King Tiger's down here, you can basically try and push back on the top side where you've just killed the Panzer IV G. Because this is a large investment in points, this King Tiger. I kind of expected it to come out. But that's 350 points. So you can probably tell that this top side hasn't been reinforced for a little while. And therefore you can thrust a lot of points towards it. M4A1, going to be coming in. So looking for the kills onto these Panzergrens. Should know that this Panzergrens here due to it killing the Jumbo, but it looks like he's gonna fall for that ambush either way. And he loses an infantry squad for free, which is really bad. Because just letting a Panzergren there, like the one man Panzergren squad, just letting that kill a half track with an infantry squad in it, literally pays it off instantly. And that is just not good. Back 38 is also going to be going for shots onto the M4A1 here. Can Paul save his bottom? <laughs> Who knows? We'll have to find out as he continues that engagement with the Pack 38. But you can see the Pack 38 does have trouble penetrating that at max range. But then again, the M4A1 also has trouble hitting accurate shots, apparently. There we go, pinned down. Good stuff. Okay, SBW231 is going to be coming down to the bot side and taking back all that territory. It looks like the King Tiger did find the M4A3 here as it tried to retreat. Good stuff indeed. Now that Koenig's Tiger is just going to head up to the top side, help deal with the armor up there, whilst the 231 continues to make ground on the bottom. However, armored rifles are here. And are likely to get the bazooka shot into the 231. If they miss, then they'll probably die. But if they don't, then that's going to definitely help out the Beck by relieving that pressure on that bot side. Focke Wolf 190G1 going to be coming in with 15 HE power bombs now in response to that. And Thrace is going to want to bring in like another armoured vehicle in order to hold this bottom side. But still a plus one in his favor. Major victory in 14 minutes and one second. There's still a bit of a chance here for the Beck. He could still maybe 
play around the Königsteiger on the bottom side. But there's a second Königsteiger now coming in. A second Königsteiger. Now this just shows how much or how little pressure Thrace is under. If he's able to save up 700 points to bring in two King Tigers, then the Beck really isn't being aggressive enough. Or he's making too many mistakes. Which to me seems more likely. Because at the moment, like again here, the Panzergren shouldn't have taken out the engineers. And then like two units of engineers going up against beaten up units of Panzergrens would have won the town back. Like there's only two pa units of Panzergrens in his way, along with the Pioneer Führer and a Panzergren Führer. Uh, then there's pretty much no AT up here. And he could have easily taken advantage of that after he took out the Panzer 4G. Like he knew that his opponent was overextending here just to sort of match what uh, the Beck was doing on the bottom side. But now we've got to be careful here. M4A3 76mm is coming in. I'm probably likely to see the Pack 43 take that out. Because I feel like the M4A3 is just going to move to the bottom side. It's going to be in range of the Pack 43. Pack 43 is going to end up getting a shot off. And uh, that's going to be very depressing for the Beck. Although the P38 Lightning is coming in. Onto the Pack 38 though. Can that Pack 43 land the shot? Forces the M4A3 to fall back and in a terrible position as well. If it can maintain the range, then he can probably get the kill. Second shot, is it going to hit? Yes, it is. Track's broken as well. M4A3 is dead. Pack 43 does the job. Just as I expected. That is a real shame. There's no more recon really in the right place anymore for the back. He's got some back here, which I guess gives him an idea of reinforcements coming in. But... Uh, Around this area there is none, and the Pack 43 takes it by surprise and uh, kills him off. Focke Wolf 190 has been very useful throughout the game for, for strafing enemy units. And we're now seeing the King Tiger just trying to get into a position to engage these tanks approaching the Pack 38. Koenig's Tiger is also shooting at Paul from the top side. I don't think Paul's going to last very long. If that engagement is allowed to continue. However, the SBW231 might go down. Oh, looks like the Marder 1 managed to pick off a tank in the top side as well. Very nice job by Thrace there. We are going to see the Pack 38 pop into the tree line once again. Gets the crew knockout on to pull. And the kill before it goes down. Wow. For the fatherland. Does the, does the job right there. Okay, so Nispel. Looking for the kill. On to the M4A3. Koenigsteiger coming in from both sides. You would not want to be in this M4A3 right now, would you? Now, honestly, at this range, the M4A3 might have a chance at penetrating a Koenigsteiger. So that will be interesting to see. Can the, can the M4A3 land that shot? If he hugs this tree line enough and closes the range enough onto one of these Koenigsteigers, he could probably get the kill into the front armor. He's looking for the aim here. Never mind. Nispel comes down on the bottom side. More experienced. Gonna not let that happen. And the M4A3 goes down. And the Jumbo and the M4A3 on the road there. I don't know if they're gonna do much better against the Koenigsteiger either. Since the Koenigsteiger has more than enough AP in order to penetrate that Jumbo. And Pip's gonna be coming in there shooting down the P38. So he's just got to focus down this M4A3 because it's very unlikely that the Jumbo will pretty much ever penetrate him. On the bot side, the Armoured Rifles will be killed off soon and the Boyter Sherman will exploit that area. And this is pretty much it as the Beck surrenders and that's a major defeat for the Beck after Thrace TW wins after 30 minutes and 16 seconds. Fantastic job there. 2,845 kills to 1,335 losses for Thrace. Opposite, of course, for the Beck, also known as uh, Alex of Newski. We jump over to the kills. This M4A 376 did a good job on the bot side. Killed off the pack, killed off the Panzer G, killed off a Befell Panzer IV, and definitely helped the breakthrough down there, which was great. However, I feel like on the top side after this M4A3 killed all of these units, the Boyd Sherman, the Panzer 4G, the Brumbar, he should have taken back the town. And I, I feel like he didn't really have confidence in doing so. Um, 
although that should have really counted up in his head, you know, to 400 points. And when he saw a King Tiger coming at the bottom side, again, that should have just assured him that like 400 points being killed plus 350 spent on a new King Tiger, that top side is not reinforced. And that's the math you got to do in this game in order to win. Um, and that didn't unfortunately happen. So instead, we're going to see the pack 38 that came in the top of uh, the, fir the first pack 38 that came in the, in the game killed off pool in the end before dying itself glorious service to the motherland and we see the s307 pack there on the bottom side picking off the m5a1s and the m4a1 i feel like again um the back could have maybe played around that sort of tree patch a little better in order to get his m5a1s closer to the pack so that the pack didn't have the range advantage then there was the pack 43 that picked off two M4A3 76 mils in the bot side. That must have been what killed the one that was retreating actually. Rather than the King Tiger moving down there and killing it, I feel like it was actually the pack 43 that killed it on the way back because the recon in between had already been killed. Pips managed to take out the P38 Lightning in the end, strafed an M1 gun to death on the bot side. Brumbar did plenty of damage, although it might not have necessarily paid itself off. Panzer IV G, however, this thing did a fantastic job supporting the top. Um, M4A1 went down to Boise Sherman. King Tigers at the end were just there for fun, as Nispel only picked up the M4A3 kill, and the other King Tiger not even on the board. So that just shows really how little pressure the back was putting on to Thrace throughout that game, and that's just unfortunate. But either way, a very interesting game, lots to talk about. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next game for game two of the best of three between the Beck and Thrace TW. Goodbye.